Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is from the 1972 Giallo film Smile Before Death. It's a Silvio Amadio film. And this is actually the very first time I've ever seen anything by Silvio Amadio. And I will say, solid directing. I'm into it. Decent enough. I'm all right. Not the greatest Giallo, but, you know, I'll talk about the good and the bad with it and break down all my thoughts on this one. Uh, disclaimer, um, sorry if I sound congested. Having a really bad allergy day, so... That also affects my asthma, so I might have to kind of slow down a little bit more here and there. Um, just a heads up on that. Anyway, this one, directed by Silvio Amadio, who also directed Wolves of the Deep, All the Other Girls Do, Twisted Girls, Amok, and That Malicious Age. Gives you a little bit of an idea of the other types of films Amadio was involved in, which, you know, makes a whole lot of sense because obviously Giallo is has a lot of lurid stuff to it, always did, um, which I guess was one of the big appeals back then, because as we know, pornography was not as well, uh, as available, basically, and so films like Giallo usually put a lot of nudity in there, that's kind of one of the staples of Giallo, this film definitely doing plenty of that, uh, sometimes it feels shoehorned in, like a, some of the stuff with this, but um, yeah, it's nothing like Slaughter Hotel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was all about the nudity. This at least has, you know, story. And speaking of which, this was written by Amadio as well as Francisco Merli, who also wrote scripts for This Time I'll Make You Rich and Who Breaks Pays. Also, Francesco Di Dio also was involved. This film is also known as Smile of the Hyena, um, which I think is a decent title, but I, I liked Smile Before Death more. Seems very giallo-ish. You gotta love uh, cutting directly to a murder right after the opening credits. Uh, I will say the music in the very beginning with the opening credits when it was just like black with, you know, white credits on it. Um, very annoying music. And in general, the music in this is quite annoying all the way throughout the film. So not a big fan of that aspect of it. Wish there was a different score. It's, it's very weird, especially like that song, which is the opening credit song which has like the giggling in it, it's just very odd and not good. Anyway, I do like how right from that they cut to the murder of Dorothy. You know that that's, you know, the setup that, oh, someone was killed. Most likely someone was killed, although they talk about it a little bit later as potentially being a suicide or ruled by a suicide by the police, because as we all know, the police in Giallo films are always stupid always oblivious, always blundering. There's actually an entire film, it's called The Police Are Blundering in the Dark, which is a giallo. Ah, the old door locked from the inside riddle. Yeah, as soon as they made a comment about, uh, I think this was actually, uh, what was her name? Oh no, I think that was like the voiceover, where it was showing someone looking at the photos, which I guess was, you were supposed to assume was a in investigator, a detective of sorts. And they were just kind of like stating the details of the case. And they were saying, you know, door locked from the inside. And as soon as I heard that, not only did I think of the strange vice of Mrs. Ward, but I also thought this is something that's come up a few times in films that whenever that's stated, it's always a murder. Plus, it's a giallo film. So we just know that there's got to be a murder. You're, I'm sure you're leading with a murder. Although it would be interesting if there was one where you think it's leading towards being a murder, but you find out it was actually a suicide, kind of doing the reverse. I'm sure there is a film out there doing it, but can't think of any at the moment. When I was watching it, I thought something tells me that Gianna had something to do with Dorothy's death. That ended up being accurate. Uh, just based on her conversation with Nancy, because she was asking, acting really dodgy during the conversation with Nancy. Nancy. Uh, then throw in the talk with Marco about controlling Nancy's estate because of Dorothy being gone. You know, they were very, very concerned about the fact that Nancy was much older than they assumed she was. And they were like, oh, she's getting close to legal age, which means that, you know, she'll be able to start taking over the estate of Dorothy soon. So we have to move quickly, which obviously you find out later means we're going to off this person. Um, although, you know, there are some things that come into play that make them kind of question that here and there. But yes, Gianna was really checking Nancy out when she changed, changed clothing. That was one of those moments where they're like, get the nudity in, let's go, let's throw the nudity in really, really quick. And then they add the extra intrigue of a woman being interested in another woman. Obviously a very lurid thing to throw in film back then. Uh, not nearly as much so now, but uh, 
it also set it up for much later on when Nancy uh, started to come on to Gianna after she had already come on to Marco. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, obviously you can tell by the end of the film, knowing all the information that that wasn't actually Nancy, she was someone, one of Paolo's girls, or was Paolo's girl. Because uh, I guess Dorothy was one of Paolo's girls too, I guess. Yeah. And, th and there is something that's kind of like insinuated that she was like a prostitute. Because they show a really quick clip of her like accepting money from a guy in like a bedroom setting. I assume that's what that was supposed to be. So I guess that Paolo is like a pimp maybe? I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. It feels like Gialla, uh, Gianna does the photo shoot with Nancy as a way to endear herself to her more. Uh, yes, I really do feel like you can, it just like oozes from Gianna that she's trying as hard as she can to get as close as she can to Nancy and to earn her trust. Because obviously down the road, it would make it a lot easier for her and Marco to enact their plan to lull her into a false sense of security and then off her. I like how it's blatantly obvious that Marco is making no attempt to help Nancy when she is struggling in the water. Uh, she was struggling to tread water when they were out on the boat. That was after their big montage of becoming great friends and saying, oh, we're just like a family, even though much later they start boning each other. Family doesn't do that. Uh, not usually. And that's messed up. But, <laughs> but um, they, um, yeah, so you, tell, you can tell very, very easily that, that Marco is just waiting for her to drown for the most part. Especially because they're showing the binoculars, which I assume is Gianna watching everything go down. And it's going between Gian uh, Marco and to Nancy, and Nancy's just like, oh, I can't swim, I can't swim. And then she even says something later that she noticed that Marco seemed like he wasn't even trying. I mean, it's, it's really stupid because in the case that she does end up living like she does because they had a rescue boat come out, you want it to seem like you were trying. Because if anyone else sees... You don't want them being like, yeah, that person just let her drown. So he he could have at least, you know, tried to swim over to her and just be like, oh, no, you're slipping out of my hand. You know, just sell it. Sell it a little bit, dude. Marco instead was just like treading water and just like staring at her. <laughs> it's not very smart. Interesting shot with Nancy sitting at her desk uh, with full facial reflection in two mirrors at the same time. That's one of those kind of like cool inspired shots Italian films, especially of this time period, and with a lot of giallos, really liked using reflections in mirrors. And this one was a really cool one. I haven't really seen that before. Uh, where she's sitting there, like I think that's when she was reading the reading the the letter that was from Dorothy, which you then found find out was forged, totally fake, and that was pa Paolo's idea. But yeah, so uh, just love that, that it was like one mirror on top of another, and you see her entire face in both of them. It must have been really hard to line up that shot, because it looks tricky. I like the scene where they show Dorothy at the edge of the frame, and then when she gets out of bed, that's when Paolo rolls into frame. It's a really good kind of misdirection where you're like, oh, maybe Dorothy's not feeling well. This was during the, the flashback to the party um, that happened before Dorothy died. Um, Marco comes in the room and you're like, oh, Dorothy's not feeling well. She's just laying on the bed. And the, the other half of the bed's like cut off because she's at the end of the frame. And then she gets up and then that's when Paolo rolls over. And it's like this surprise. She's boning another guy because Marco is her husband, a.k.a. Nancy's stepfather at this point. Um, I didn't see that coming. I, I like that type of reveal, that kind of like, it, it's not like it's a huge reveal or anything, but a little surprise. So I enjoyed the way that was executed. So Marco and Gianna are Nancy's family now, and she wants to get naked in front of them. Okay, and then she watches Marco and Gianna get it on. So it makes more sense that that's not that big of a deal when you find out later that it, they're not any sort of family because Nancy isn't actually Nancy. It's some unnamed person as an imposter, but at the time, it feels very weird. You're like, why is she wanting to get naked in front of Marco and Gianna? Why is she so sexually interested in Marco? But then you get the idea that, you know, she's onto their game. She knows that they were involved in Dorothy's death. But then there's that extra twist of she doesn't really care about the fact that they killed Dorothy. She just wants that green, as does Paolo, does, as does Paolo her partner in crime. 
As soon as Gianna, Gianna says she and Nancy are enemies, it seems that Nancy becomes very motivated to actually bone Marco. She seems a little bit interested in him at first, but then once Gianna makes some sort of comment about like being competitors or something, she's like, oh, aren't we? Then that's that really marks the, the moment where uh, Nancy's like, yep, going after Marco now, definitely going to bone him. And she does, obviously. She does. I was expecting the reveal of how Dorothy's murder went down to come toward the end of the film. It came way earlier. I think it was like 50 minutes in or something like that. The best part of it was the string trick with the key. I really, really enjoy that. I always seeing those. I like seeing those kind of cool things. I think it was better the way it's done in The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, but this was also very clever and interesting. And then it was good because they show you that related to Dorothy's murder so that when it's being set up later, you know exactly what the point is and where they're going with it as soon as you see the string and the key. That's when they're kind of setting everything up to kill Nancy, but then you find out that actually Gianna's in cahoots with Nancy at that point, who's in cahoots with Paolo. Yeah, you get it. As soon as Nancy cries to Gianna about Marco trying to bed her, you get the idea that Nancy's up to something. That was the moment where I was like, I was a little bit suspicious of what was going on. I was like, maybe she knows, maybe she's kind of playing around here. Uh, she has an ulterior motive. But that moment, like when she goes and she's just like, oh, he tried to sleep with me. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's up to something big time. She's got some sort of plot. She's trying to take them down because you see that she's very much going after Marco. She's very sexually aggressive with him. So, yeah, that's when you know for sure something's going down. Gianna questioning where Magda was when Nancy was shot at leads you to believe that Magda is in on the plot that Nancy had concocted. But, or actually I'd say more, more likely Gianna believed that Magda was potentially in on the plot. She was starting to get a little paranoid about things. And I guess she should have been. She just hadn't counted on Paolo. She had no clue. And at that point, honestly, as an audience member, I had totally forgotten about Paolo. And that's the whole point. That's what Giallo does a lot of. Though a lot of the times they'll kind of show a very, very minor character very early on, and then you don't see them again until the very end when it's the reveal that, oh, remember this character you just saw briefly? They're the killer. Or they have some sort of significant role in this situation. As soon as you see the string and key being set up again, you know that the attempt on Nancy's life is coming. And this point and at this point, she lets Gianna know that she knows too much. Uh, yeah, that was the whole thing. They, I, I feel like they were planning on trying to kill her anyway, but then they also kind of like make references to the fact that like they're doing it because she knows too much, and they only really find out that she knows too much after everything's said about the letter, the fake letter of Dorothy saying that you know she wasn't depressed and you know she was going to divorce Marco basically. It appears that the killing of Magda is a mistake based on Marco's reaction to stabbing her. He had this very surprised, kind of like dreadful look after uh, he stabbed Magda. Like he had thought that it was actually Nancy coming through the door. But wouldn't he, like they live with her. Like I believe she's like a servant that, well I don't want to say a servant. She's like a maid there basically. And they would know what she looks like. So it just seemed kind of weird that that was the case. Um, but then did they also just need, I also questioned at that time, did they just need Magda gone? Would you find out like that is the point later? I believe because that's what Mark, was it Marco? I think Marco says it to Nancy at that point. And he's just like, you know, this is basically, this is on you. Like she had to go because she knew about this and that just leaves you as the only other person who knows about the situation with Dorothy. So obviously you have to die. So, but, um, the way it played out was just odd. Just very, very odd. Um, it's funny how Marco sets up the suicide situation for Nancy and then Gianna traps him in there. He really took his time. Like, and as he was just going so painfully slow setting everything up, you were like, yeah, he's going to get trapped in there. Like, you just know what's coming. You don't know necessarily who's going to be the one to set that up. And it is a nice reveal when you see Gianna at the door and she's, you know, taking the key out, the key and the string out. I like that reveal. So uh, Marco got played, got played. And I thought he was going to die, but then he ends up being alive because they want him to write a check, Paolo and Nancy. 
So Nancy wasn't some sweet, innocent girl all along. She was Paolo's girl posing as Nancy to take care of Marco and Gianna. I do quite like that twist. Overall, I don't think this is like an amazing film, but I think that twist made me like it a bit more than I would have otherwise. So I'm down. I like how Paolo doesn't want revenge for Dorothy at all. He just wants to extort money from Marco and Gianna. Um, yeah, it shows you the type of person that Paolo was. I mean, it leads you to believe also that maybe either Dorothy was just paying him for sex, which I guess I would assume that's the case because of the huge age difference. You know, not that that necessarily means everything, but, you know. But you, you get a glimpse into who he is. He's not a good person. He's not in it to, to avenge Dorothy's death. He doesn't want to have them stand trial for what they did. He's just like, just give me some cash. I could care less if Dorothy's dead. All right, good guy, huh? Kind of a wacky ending, though. I, th I think it's too much. I think they should have ended it where Paolo and Nancy get the money and then they just take off. Adding that twist of, like, you know, they're driving off on his, uh, I think, moped, and then they make that left turn, and then all of a sudden you hear a crash, and both Nancy and Paolo, Nancy and Paolo, have died because they were hit by a taxi cab. And who's in the taxi cab? The real Nancy. It's just too coincidental. It's too hokey. It's too ridiculous. I really think they should have just ended it with Paolo and Nancy just getting away. I mean, they even could have done it where Paolo and Nancy get away and then the real Nancy eventually shows up. Um, that would have been fine, and you, so you could still incorporate the actual Nancy. But the whole thing of them just getting killed by the cab that's that has Nancy in it, it's just ridiculous. And, it, and it's not a good way to end, in my opinion. And that's especially after getting a nice twist reveal. Then you get let down by this just weirdness. You're like, oh, not a great choice. Once again, hated the music in this, though. But overall, I liked it enough. And uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it three stars. I was between two and a half and three, but the twist is good enough. It's intriguing enough. I'll give it three stars. But I considered just going with the two and a half, so just know that. Would love to hear other people's opinions on this film. Go ahead and put it in the comments. Do you love it, hate it, in between? you want to talk about things related to it? Do you want to just talk about Giallo in general? We can do that in the comments. Also, if you really like Giallo films, you can also check out a ton of other Giallo reviews on my channel. I have a whole playlist for them, uh, so enjoy. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, you are wonderful, and thank you very much. If you haven't, please consider it because it is quick, painless, costs you no money, and it is your way to help keep me motivated to keep doing these videos. Because, you know, sometimes I get a little bit tired. Sometimes it's a little bit much because there's a lot going on in my life. And it's just nice when I see a new subscriber. I'm just like, ah, there's a person who's appreciating the content. This is why I do this. So really would appreciate a subscribe. Also, if you could hit the notification bell button, then you'll know when I'm putting up new reviews or any video because I don't just do reviews, but mainly reviews. And then that way, if you watch it on the sooner end, it kind of helps boost it on YouTube. So I would appreciate that. But regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this video. And until next time, keep it brutal.